Greetings, I'm Demonac. Now let's slay the spire. T time for a brand new character. Uh, they they finally took the new character the out of beta. You do have to complete a run with the silent to get that to unlock this character, which it doesn't remember the fact that you've done dozens of runs as a silent. It's the defect. He's a combat robot. Became self-aware. He's defective. His starting artifact gives him channel one lightning. There's so much crap to explain about him. Uh, let's let's not do ascension for him. Does he have access to ascension level one with it? Oh, whatever. We'll leave it on because why not? I didn't know that we'd get access to that already. So <clears throat> he's got some different stuff going on. We haven't haven't done a boss with him yet, so we don't have any things. Just looking at his his deck, you're like he's got. It's slightly smaller. He's only got four strikes and four defense. He has one jap, zap, which doesn't make a lot of sense if you haven't seen his two stuff, and one dual cast. Let's just uh, start the fight, and then it will make more sense. Um, I don't need to shop this early. But let's go this way, get double question marks, then the shop, and then... I might not be ready at that point anyway. I don't know, whatever. So, the defect has these orb slots. He starts with three of them. There are some things that can change it. Normally you have three orb slots. And he's, his starting artifact starts him with one lightning orb every combat, which is excellent. So these orbs have a pass effect that happens at the end of your turn every turn. And then they also have this second effect that says evoke, which happens if you, if you, if you have a full bunch of orb slots... If all your orb slots are full and you try and channel a new orb, the one at the front will be evoked and it'll do whatever it says here. So the lightning orb that you start with by default, at the end of every turn, it deals three damage to one enemy at random. That's its passive. And when you evoke it, it deals eight, am eight damage to one enemy at random. So if I got two more lightning orbs going on, at the end of turn, it would do three damage to a random enemy three times. And if I added one more orb it would crowd out this first one, which would deal 8 damage immediately to a random enemy. So that's what's going on mostly. I, of course, got none of the interesting cards in my starting hand. Um, let's, uh, yeah. I'm gonna, if I want to kill him, I'm going to have to do that and take some damage, but no, well, whatever. So there's my 3 damage going off. He hits me, and he's not attacking this turn. So... We also start with the Zap card, which will channel one more of those lightnings, and Dual Cast, which evokes one orb, but does it does it twice. We basically, would say it'll evoke this for double the normal effect. So this would do eight damage to a random enemy twice, and then be gone. Since I don't have a full bunch of orbs, to me that's not a very good power, until unless it's going to finish off an enemy. So this guy's not even attacking this round, so I'd much rather just let them do their passive damage, and I can do that later, or in practice, this guy's toast anyway, so. Get our third lightning orb, hit him there, and then if I end my turn, it'll actually just kill him with those three orbs. Gold, potion. There, uh, there are some more artifacts that affect potions and stuff like that, so the card choice is going to be really interesting for a while, because we're not used to them, unless you've been watching, say, Quill 18 do play it in beta. So this channels X lightning orbs. So literally, if I have three energy and I play this, it'll give me three new lightning orbs. If I only have, if I have all my three orbs full, it'll evoke all of the, the existing ones and replace them with lightning. Obviously, there are other kinds of orbs, but you start with lightning. Sag like discharge. Whenever you take attack damage, channel one lightning. That's pretty damn good. That helps fill up your slots. And I mean, it does mean you're taking damage to trigger it, but that's a good power that only costs one. Or their Sweeping Beam, which does 6 damage to all enemies and draws you a card. That's pretty sweet. What's this upgrade to? Uh, upgrades to 9 damage. This upgrades to Channel 2 Lightning whenever you get hit. That's kind of craziness, how your orbs start going off. And this would be X plus 1 Lightning, which is... So those are all excellent cards when they're upgraded. Um, I, I've never played this character before. I've just seen mostly Quill 18 play it. These are all very good. They're all an improvement to my deck at this stage. Uh, I think at this point, I don't have many things that challenge orb channel orbs. I think this would actually be the strongest for now. 
And dual cast, I don't like very much. I found because it's it's evoking an orb without. I'd rather evoke orbs by getting more orbs. Now you are getting some value there. Is doing double. If you upgrade this, it's free. They, there's a, there are some different ways that you can build the defects. They have some interesting sort of combo type stuff you can try and put together. And I've been told it's a little bit trickier in the first act. So if I hit him for six again, he'd still be at four. So the random damage couldn't even kill him if I got lucky. If I dual cast, it's going to do 8 damage, but no, neither of those get it. Now, I could hit this guy, so he'd be down to 4, and then if I dual cast, I would lose this. I'd have no orbs, which is pretty poor, but there's a, there'd be two 50% chances to kill this guy, and this guy get hit with some anyway, but then I'd, I'd still take damage. You know, this is mostly not very good. I am I guess I'm going to take damage anyway, so I'm just going to trigger that guy's curl up so his armor's gone, and... Oh, whoops. The last game I played, I had more energy. I, for some reason, stupidly thought that I could do more. Okay, so I could zap and channel one lightning. I could just Tempest, channel three lightning, which would discharge this one right away, doing eight damage to one of them, and then the other one would take nine damage, so they're dead if I do that. See, I got a third orb, it had, it ran out of space, so it had to evoke one, did its 8 damage at random, and now they're each going to do 3 damage at random, there's only one target, it's not very random. Attack potion, pretty good, just gives you a random attack, and it costs it zero for that turn. Okay, so we've got three new choices. Cool-headed channels one frost orb, and then draws a card. So frost orb, is passive, gives you two armor. And it triggers in, I think it triggers in about the best possible timing for all those other, like, uh, now I'm forgetting all the words, but if you see all the various kinds of artifacts and plated armor and stuff like that, it gives you armor at the end of turn. The, uh, the Frost Orbs channel in a very favorable timing for those things is my understanding. Um, if you evoke a Frost Orb, it gives you 5 armor immediately, so if you dual cast it, it would give you 10 armor, which could help you avoid damage. So one, one Frost Orb and draws a card. What's this upgrade to? Upgrades to draw two cards. Okay. Leaf is just flat out nine block, which is actually pretty good. And these guys are good for building defensive decks. It's like building a poison deck, except you start out with some of the stuff for it. And it, you don't have to worry about moving it. You don't need an artifact to help it move be, help move your poison between targets. It'll just target what's left. So... So in defensive is pretty good. There's also the auto shields, which if you have zero block currently, this will give you 11 block. Which is a lot of block. But I think I'm just going to take the leap. It's almost as much. So ring mass of light. Encompassing the center room. Upgrade two random cards, lose 15 hit points. Uh, there's a really good chance it's going to hit crummy like defends and stuff. But I'm going to do this anyway. Leap and a defend. Okay. Got a defend plus we. Heal 18 hit points for cheap. Or 50 to remove a card. Now I'm just going into a shop, but this is still cheaper and doesn't increase. Since every time you remove a card in a shop, it increases the cost for future shops. Do I want to get rid of the dual cast is the question. This is actually potentially pretty strong in the early game. I don't like it overall. But right now, you evoke a lightning orb. You're just going to do 8 damage twice. It could help you finish things off. Later I found that's not enough. Uh, I added a leap and a defend. I, these, these strikes are actually the worst overall. I'm going I'm to be replacing them with other stuff. Let's just get rid of a strike. Now I don't have... I wish I had a choice to not go to the shop since I just spent that money. But I guess we'll go to a shop. So, regular stuff. Cold snap. So deal 6 damage and get a frost orb. That's actually pretty nice because it's doing the damage. Doom and Gloom deals 10 damage to all enemies and channels one Dark Orb. Now, it does cost two. Uh, dark Orb has a passive that doesn't kind of affect the battleground right away. They, uh, they Every turn, their passive adds six to like the counter on that particular Dark Orb. And when the Dark Orb goes off, it deals... It chooses the enemy with the fewest hit points and hits it for six damage for every charge that's built up. So six damage for every turn that you've had that Dark Orb out there. I think they start, if, if you're thinking of it that way, I think they start with one charge. So they start doing start with six damage that they would do if you evoked them. 
but they do nothing if not evoked. They just kind of sit around and build up, that which is interesting. Well, yeah, gain three block, return a card from your discard pile to your hand. I really like that, although I wish I had more energy. I don't have... Does this become... Gain five block in here. Yeah. It's not very much block, but just being able to take a card from your discard pile, put it in your hand, that's better than card drop. Like, that's fantastic. Oh, this is gain one focus, or two focus. This is a power... Focus is a new ability like strength and dexterity. Focus is basically spell damage for your orbs. So gaining one focus doesn't increase the damage of Cold Snap, like Cold Snap's attack, at all. It would still do six damage if I had one focus. But the Frost Orbs, instead of giving me two armor every turn, they'd be giving me three armor every turn. And um, I think focus applies double when you, to the, uh, like, evoke effect, or I, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't, it's still, you're doing a lot more. Even if it just applies once, it's still, like, you're doing a lot more. Uh, I've got to buy this. And then I'm not going to have much money left for anything else. Uh, I'm not going to have any money left for anything else. This is also, this is like dual cast, but like ramped up. Like if I spent three, it would evoke the orb once, so I'd only lose one orb, but it would do three times that orb's effect for three damage. There are, or there is a kind of orb that gives you energy, so you could potentially get a situation where you're generating a whole ton of energy, and then you get a damage orb to the front and evoke it for like a billion damage, but yeah, that's, oh well. Done with that. Um, upgrading something would be nice. Double question mark. I can upgrade an end question mark, so that's fine. I could also use the healing, but upgrading more important. So dual cast would become free. Zap would become free, which is pretty good. This would also, because it would be X plus one, that's either doing another evoke worth of damage every time, or it means I could play my other cards and then play this for zero energy. On the other hand, just getting two focus out of this makes everything, all my orbs, so much more effective. I don't have that many things that are giving me orbs yet, but... Uh, that seems like a no-brainer, but actually, I think I'm going to make the zap free. Because I just don't have enough energy to do uh, all the stuff I want to be doing. So that's going to be like having a little bit more energy overall. All right, so he's not doing anything to me right now. This is do, doing this for three is going to do more like this. One energy on this is going to do eight damage. One energy on this is going to do six damage. So I might as well do this. And I've got full orb, full electric orbs. That's pretty strong. Okay, so here we go. If I defragment now, or sorry, if I dual cast now, that would do another 16 damage. Let's see. So they're doing eight per pop. If I focus... Okay, it only adds one one X to the it's not it's not increased on the evokes, but still now they're doing four passive damage and then evoking for nine. If I dual cast one, that would be eighteen, twenty two, twenty six, so he would not be dead. Yeah, twenty six would still not kill him, so I'm better off defending and zapping for that, and the next turn he's dead pathetically easily. Free zap, which Evoked it because it had that, and whatever. Pointless defense, super high. This all seems very impressive, uh, but in the first act, when you ha don't have any real combos going on, I don't think it's so good against elites. I think they're hard. Blizzard, deal damage equal to two times the frost that you channeled all the combat. I don't have anything that gives me frost orbs, so this is pretty useless right now. But every time you gained a frost orb, that's what channeled means, every time you gained a frost orb, in the entire battle, this will do two times that much damage. So if you've gained four Frost Orbs over the course of the battle, this would do eight damage to all enemies. In long fights, and when you have more stuff going on, you could be channeling a lot of Orbs. So that would be pr could be pretty dangerous. What's it upgrade to? Three times. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This goes up to nine damage and one Frost. So channel one Frost for each enemy in combat and exhaust itself. And if you upgrade it, it becomes innate. Okay, so it just starts you out with kind of full armor orbs. That's kind of, Let's try that out. That's kind of cool. If it's innate, it'll be good. Oh. And I drew it. Yes. Okay. So let's do that for zero. So that evokes 
because it was five. That's not normal, but like whatever it's five. So it evoked two of them to to finally get down to the three that it could fit. So now if I Tempest, I'll lose all those armor orbs, but I won't take any damage in the first round, and I'll have three orbs out there. So um, I'm sure there was a smarter way to have done all that, but let's go for it. So, <laughs> pointlessly infinite armor for the first round, but one of them dead. We're obviously taking no damage here, and we have full orbs going into the rest of the fight. Uh, let's see. Defragment. More power. Uh... Oh, this is only doing four now. Okay, that sucks. These are also doing four. Uh, how much damage are they doing? Eight. Crap. I can't really... This... Even this guy would still have to get hit by two of these to die. I can't really... I, I could gamble on taking him out. I think I'm better off just blocking twice and... Realizing that I won't kill any of them, I actually probably should have used the attack potion, but whatever. Oh, if I'd hit him, he would have died, and I would have taken less damage, but... Damn. Okay, um... Let's kill this guy, because the evoke is going to do actually more. And we're going to strike this guy, because he's the only one that's attacking. So would I zap, if it randomly hits one with the evoke, that was the only one that wouldn't have died. We'll leap for like a ton of block, it's pretty good, and take that guys. Okay, whatever time. We're just getting started. So they have a their this class also has a lot of zero cost cards and things that kind of combo around building a deck full of zero cost cards, which doesn't seem to be what I'm going for here. So there's claw here, which is just three damage, but it costs zero, and every time you attack with the claw. All claws in your deck, including this one, get plus two damage for the rest of the fight. So, obviously that would snowball if you had several claws and could cycle them. So also this beam cell, which is just three damage for zero, it applies one vulnerable to your opponent. That's pretty sweet. Although, vulnerable is 50% more damage from attacks. If I'm doing all my damage from orbs, that may not actually, that doesn't actually apply to most of the orb type stuff. I'm just going to go with another Tempest. Whether or not that's smart. Plus one energy in the first round. I like it. Uh, so we can get an upgrade or rest, technically. There are two elites here, but I, I feel like elites are going to be hard. We're going to go do this and then fight one elite and see if we die. Um, let's now improve the defragment. I wanted that free zap, because that's going to come up a lot in combat. But Okay. So... Armor. If I defragment and then I Tempest for two, it is going to break through his armor, I think, but it's still the way to go, I think. I think that's about as good a start as I can get. Um, so this would go, would only it's only one Frost Orb, but it would go off and give me that. If I Tempest, it'll give me three. Uh, I don't want to take all this damage, though. i got to spend the Defend for some armor first. And I don't think the order matters for these two things. I lost my Frost Orb there, but I'm blocking most of the damage. Um, do I want to use this before or after? Actually, this will evoke an orb twice, and then this would replace it, so I would end with more orbs. On the other hand, I would get an extra evoke if I did this now, but then I'd have two less orbs. I don't think I'm killing him this turn. Let's just uh, do that. Really. Well, I should have used this weak potion earlier. That would have been smart, because I would have taken no damage the last round, and not as much this round. I'm going to hit him for 15. If the, if I got an attack from this that did 8, that would actually kill him. That is not 8. It did weaken him, though, so it's as good as the weak potion. Okay. Whatever. Good gun worse. Regal Pillow, not a big fan. Attack potion, I am a big fan. Alright, 
Ball Lightning is like my is pretty damn good because it's seven damage and channels a lightning orb. I could take this and have more like defense orb options, and this gives vulnerable. But again, I'm not doing that much in attacks. I guess I'm still doing a fair amount of attacks because I still got all the strikes. But this is very strong. All right, you guys. Um, yeah, they're doing much. Oh, the leap's gonna block all their damage. So okay, who cares then? Tap, 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 tap. I guess if I'd accidentally killed one, then that 12 armor would not have been enough. Hey, chill, we'll... Okay, defrag first. Then we chill. And then Tempest the crap out of you. I like the Tempest. Well, lightning's still very good. Leap, still pretty good. I'm obviously not going for the claw-based strategy, although I could have had two now. I don't have all that, like, card drawing and stuff. Um, I'm going to keep adding things. Deck's still pretty small. I'm going to add another Ball Lightning. We go for another Elite. we got a bunch of potions. Strength Potion is not as powerful for this character as it is for other characters. Oh, whatever. Let's do it, even though it's dumb. I think he's a terrible matchup because we have a lot of, like, skills. Like, this is a skill. This is also not a good starting hand. Uh, let's just go potion crazy here. Well, okay. It got plus two from the strength potion. Do I dual cast? No, because I need these long term, so... Pointless block! While I... Because right now, he doesn't have his thing, so it's not hurting me yet. But it will. I don't like that dual cast. I'd be a pretty, fa pretty big fan of getting rid of the dual cast early on. So this would give me one frost orb, which would give me two armor per turn, but it would... But playing a skill would give him plus two strength, which would give him plus two damage per turn. So that's actually kind of not a great deal right now. This is a skill, like, F uh, most of my things are skills. Ball Lightning is not a skill. The Weak Potion is not a skill. Leap would block all of his damage, including the two strength that he'd get from the Leap. On the other hand, I'm going to Tempest. So I'll, I'll take a little bit of damage past it. Okay, let's strike. Uh, I'm not going to do the Tempest. I'm just going to leap. Just do my passive damage. Stop all the damage for that turn. Fragment. He only gets mad at skills, so the power is okay. Now I could Tempest for 3, which would be 30 damage. Oh no, I can only do it for 2. So it would be 20, and then he would take the 15. It's not going to kill him, so, okay. That's too bad. Ow. I was looking for 6 this turn. You make me vulnerable, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, okay. The extra lightning channel is what I think. It's fine. When I get a curse, I gain 6 max hit points. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, streamline costs two for fifteen damage. Each time you play this, its cost is reduced by one for the rest of that fight. So if you can play streamline twice, the second time it costs one, and every time after that that it comes up, it costs zero for fifteen damage. So it's awesome if you've got your deck cycling like that. Although if you have a real deck where your deck is like pretty much all zero cost, this might actually slow slow you down in getting started your combos. Uh, Steam Barrier gains 6 block for 0, but each time you use it, its block is reduced by 1 for the rest of combat. Buffer here, 2 energy, prevent the next time you would lose hit points. This weird is a power. But yeah, so 2 energy, you play this once, the next time you would lose hit points, whether it's 1 or like 50, this will just negate that one hit point loss. That's really interesting. I don't know how much it helps me. I don't have the card draw to go with, like, the Steam Barrier, but it'd be good if I did have card draw. Um, I don't know what I want out of these. Do I take the Streamline, or do I just skip? It's not really helping my strategy. I think I'm just going to skip. Interesting. I don't think any of them are helping me exactly with my goals, so let's just not add them if they're not helping exactly with my goal. 
I don't know what my goal is. <laughs> I don't know, but it's not that. Um, he's going to do a bunch of damage to me. I get, like Tempest would hit him for 24, and then he'd take the 9. I mean, he'd die pretty fast, but uh, I've got 4 energy the first turn. Okay, so I can play my Defend and still do a full Tempest. That's pretty solid. In fact, maybe if I spent that on Dual Cast and then Tempest, or Tempest first for 3, it would do the 8, and then Dual Cast, that would be 16, so it's 24 plus 9. I still wouldn't have killed him in one turn, so whatever. See, if I had these upgraded so they were X plus 1, then I could play this one again for free, and that would be pretty sweet. I mean, I could play it for free anyway, but it won't do anything right now. Ow. Did not want to take that damage. Uh, pretty defensive turn, but that's okay, because Leap is strong defense. And if he's super dead, it doesn't matter. Go for the eyes. Three damage for zero. If the enemy intends to attack, you give them one weak. Okay. Hologram to get a card back from my discard pile. I don't actually think I have the greatest stuff to be recycling. I don't have good things. I could take this. Yeah, I might actually take this because this will often prevent some damage. And I don't clearly don't have enough defense yet. Uh, I better rest rest. I got the regal pillow, so that gave me a lot. What's my potion? Two focus? That's a hell of a boss fight potion. And I also got this two focus. Alright. Just go crazy focus on your ass. Nothing to defend against the first turn, so bam. So we're now evoking for 12 and passive for 7 each. This is gonna hurt. Insufficient defense. And we'll follow him. See, in a long fight like this, it's gonna take a while to kill. Dual cast seems like a bad idea. Like, you get that extra damage, but it's for. 16 damage, you're doing 16, okay, just using the normal orb damage, not, forget the focus I've got right now, normally it's going to do 16 damage up front, but you're losing 3 that turn, so it really is doing 15 damage, so in 5 turns you would have had more damage from having that orb, and it'd be less than 5 turns if you're generating more orbs, so you would have evoked it once anyway, so it's, I don't like it that much, I don't know, uh, since the greatest time to weaken him, but whatever, it's not like it exhausts itself. Ball lightning. Zap. More lightning. Yeah, I didn't get a block that turn. That's kind of annoying. But we did do a crap ton of damage because that focus potion is nuts. Okay, I'm going to ball lightning first. Yeah, I don't think I'm close enough that that's accelerating his death more than just like it makes more sense to defend. I am going to generate a frost orb there. I had some block that turn already, but now... Oh yeah, these are crazy with focus. That's why they start... That's why the armor is so low to start with. They do two each. But now with four, with four focus, which is an abnormally large amount of focus, I think. But now it's doing six block for each of these orbs just on their own. It's craziness. Um, let's just... Uh, you know what? Let's strike once so we don't evoke the frost orb. We're going to keep the frost orb. We just did two of those, which is still a lot of damage. So if I had dual casted the turn before last, that might have been good, because he might be dead now. But now oh, this would just do the three damage and not weaken, but that's okay, because you're you're pretty toast. Smash! So that's Act One of my first game with the uh, defect. We got creative AI, so three cost power, which is pretty expensive. At the start of each turn, add a random power card to your hand. Um, they have some other powers that trigger off powers and stuff like that, which can be pretty sweet. I don't have any of that stuff, so I think that's too expensive for me. Uh, seek. All oh, right, for zero, choose one card from your draw pile and place it in your hand, and it exhausts itself. Just a tutor for anything, which is pretty awesome, and it costs zero. Or machine learning, draw one card at the start of each turn. If I had the zero cost stuff, this is amazing. And I guess it only costs one. You can upgrade it to be in eight. Nice. 
Seek upgrades to do two cards from your draw pile every time, which is pretty good. Creative just goes to two cost. I mean, uh, in eight, draw additional cards at the start of each turn for one. It'd be awesome. My deck just isn't designed for it yet. I think I'm going to take the Seek. It's probably less good overall, but right now it's good. Uh, I don't want the Choker, because eventually I'll get screwed with stuff. Uh, I think... Do I need my energy? Like, get it. It's funny that my energy is a different symbol. The energy... But no longer see their intents. Am I going to use that energy well? I think I could use that energy pretty well. On the other hand, there are a lot of cool potions now. I think potions are better than they used to be. And I think there are some, I haven't seen, there aren't many, but I think there are some new enemies that were added at the same time they added him. There were new enemies in the beta anyway, I assume they came in at the same time. Do I actually want to not be able to see intents when there are new enemies around? I think I'm going to take the potion thing, even though the extra energy would be awesome. So yeah, we'll see what it's like in Act 2 as the defect. If you found that useful or entertaining, or if you enjoy cookies, hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to Demonac Games for more Hearthstone Arena and other gaming videos.